Hi friends, welcome back to Marked by Prayer, a daily prayer challenge during this coronavirus pandemic. My name is Luann Hunter and this is my friend, Raina Wright. Raina is a Christian writer and blogger for the Eastgate. We're here at Deer Lake United Methodist and we're so glad that you chose to join us this morning. Well, Raina, our, I wanna just go ahead and dive right into our scripture passage for today because it, it kind of gives us sort of the focus um, and the, an encouragement for us today. It comes from Hebrews 7, verse 25. It reads, Therefore he, meaning Jesus, is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Mm. And that word, um, if you're unfamiliar with that word to, to intercede, it really is... Um, it just means he lives to pray for us that he um, you know sometimes we don't even know how to pray um, right. we don't know what to pray about or how to pray um, it just sometimes things can seem overwhelming and this is so encouraging to me is that um, I know that Christ lives to pray for us um, I don't know it just really gives me hope yeah me too me too and especially a lot of times you can think well um, maybe Christ prayed in the days that the the Bible was written and maybe he prayed for us back then but this says he always lives he is doing it right now mm -hmm. so even even right now and and as a side note funny we had a few bloopers and we said okay God we need you to pray for us right, right now. now and we can have faith that he did and he is because it tells us and that he completely saves it's not like he says a prayer and it might work or it might not work but whatever he wages he will win and that's certainly with his prayers for us too so i just Absolutely. this is an empowering verse it really is and um so reyna would you uh pray for us as i know jesus is praying for us yes but, um would you pray for us that we would have just a reminder that when we're sort of at the end of ourselves mm -hmm. or um, we don't even know how to pray that we can um, just turn to him and just say, Jesus, I, I ask that you would pray for me. I ask that you would pray for my family or for my situation or for our government or um, just even for this coronavirus pandemic. Yeah. So would you pray for us? Sure. Um, Father God, we, we thank you that you invite us to pray. Lord, we just thank you um, for the good example that you are throughout the pages of scripture, Lord, we see so many times where you pray, um, Lord, where, where you have human emotions to where we can relate, where you weep with us, Lord, and you get tired, Lord, and um, examples where you've prayed, just all of these great models, Lord, and, and you instruct us that prayer isn't about us. We don't have to come up with the right words. Um, we don't have to have some elegant uh, language or, or anything but in fact your word tells us the opposite that when we pray we're to make you the priority Lord that we are to go and close the door and to not babble on and on and on because you know what we need before we ask um, Father but prayer is just your invitation to be with you um, not only to speak to you Lord but to listen as you speak with us and Father I thank you for all the prayers that you have for your people, Lord, um, all the tenderness and, and the attentiveness, Lord, and how you know what we need, Father. We just give you all praise. We give you all glory. We thank you for this reminder, God, that when we don't know what to say, Lord, you've got us, and that we can turn to you and, and simply say that, that we don't know what to do, we don't know what to say, but we do know you, and we know that you're able. Mm -hmm. So, Father, we love you. Again, we give you all honor and all praise and thank you for this day that you have made. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us. I hope you'll join Raina tomorrow for the Eastgate blog post. See you next time. Have a great day.